So as you can see, Pat's put me right inside the CTX 3030. And I'm gonna explore all the menus, show you where to find the features and how to control them, and then build a customized program mode. But first, let's have a look at all the buttons and see exactly what they all do. On the CTX 3030, there are 11 buttons on the keypad. There is also a finger trigger button at the top of the handle that operates the pinpoint and takes you out of the menu system. The very first button that we're gonna look at is the power button. When you give this a short press, it will start the CTX 3030. The first time you press it, you will be prompted to select a language. But future startups will now go straight into the detect screen. If you press and hold the power button, you will enter the factory reset menu. Here you can reset a geo store, reset settings, reset all, or change the detector's menu language. If you accidentally enter this screen, squeeze the finger trigger to restart the detector. This button is called the identify button. Pressing it after locating a target will alter the discrimination pattern. This allows you to quickly reject or accept groups of targets. If you press and hold this button, you enter the frame size menu where you can change the area size controlled by this button. One by one is the smallest frame size, five by five the largest. This button is the detect button. A short press toggles between the two patterns of a program mode or returns the CTX 3030 to the detect screen from any other menu. If you press and hold the detect button, you will enter the detect screen menu. Here you can switch on or off the target trace and target trace pinpoint features. The next button is the sensitivity button. When you press and hold this button, you enter the sensitivity menu. Here you can change the sensitivity type from auto to manual, the auto level and the manual level. Whichever of these you select before leaving the sensitivity menu will be the dedicated menu choice for future short presses. The button with the speaker icon is the audio button. When you press and hold this button, you enter the audio menu. Here you can change the volume gain, threshold level, volume limits and threshold pitch. Whichever of these you select before leaving the audio menu will be the menu choice for future short presses. Now let's have a look at the noise cancel button. The first time this button is given a short press, it will automatically find the quietest noise channel to operate in. If you press and hold this button, you will enter the noise cancel menu. Here's where you can switch between automatic and manual noise cancel. This button is the ground balance button. The first time you press this button, you will enter the ground balance menu. With the ground balance enabled, you can select Start GB to perform the first ground balance. All future ground balances can be performed now with a short press of this button. If you want to switch the ground balance off, press and hold the button, then deselect the feature from the menu. Now let's have a look at the button with the world icon, the map button. Giving it a short press enters the map screen and further presses toggles between the different map resolutions. If you press and hold this button, you enter the map screen menu. Here you can clear a geo trail, turn on or off the view geo trail feature, recenter the map, and activate the show names feature. Below the map button is the store button. Giving this button a short press accesses the find point and waypoint menu, where you can record find and waypoints. If you press and hold the store button, you enter the geo hunt menu, where you can record, stop or pause a geo hunt. This button on the right of the display is the user button. The first time you use this button with a short press, it will switch on and off the backlight feature. This button is fully customizable. If you press and hold this button, you will enter the user function menu where you can change the functions of this button. And finally, the menu button. When you press this button, you enter the first layer of the menu structure. This has four categories, modes, geo store, display, and options. Once you press the menu, the four buttons around it become navigation buttons. Noise cancels the up button, ground balance down, sensitivity left, and audio right. The first of the menu categories is called modes. Here you will find all the saved CTX 3030 program modes. The next menu category is called geo store. 
This is where all the find points, waypoints and geo hunts are stored. The third menu category is called display. Here we can customize the detect and map screens by adding extra tools to their displays. The final category is the option menu. Here we can control the wireless feature of the CTX3030, enable its GPS capabilities and options, change the variables relating to your locality and control the display backlight feature. So that's all the buttons and menus out of the way. Now I want to show you how easy it is to build a custom mode on the CTX3030. Press menu and navigate to modes. Choose one of Milo's factory preset modes. For this demo, I'm going to select coins. Press the menu button to enter the coins mode window and then scroll down to save as new. Press the menu button to create a new mode. This will appear at the bottom of the menu list, mode six. Press menu, scroll and select edit, press menu. First, I'm going to edit the patterns of this mode. Select pattern one and press menu. Press menu again and enter the edit window. So to start with, I want to clear the existing pattern. I scroll down and select accept all and press the menu button. Now I can create a custom discrimination pattern. I press and hold the accept reject button to enter the edit frame size window. I'm going to start my pattern by selecting the 5x5 frame size tool. Then press menu to return to the pattern edit screen. The blue frame is moved up, down, left or right to select an area. Pressing the accept reject button reverses the state of that selected area. Once I reject an area, I move the frame to continue building a discrimination pattern. I then press and hold the accept reject button to change the frame size. Then press menu to return to the pattern edit screen. I continue building the pattern. Press and hold the accept reject button to change the frame size. Then press the menu button to return to the pattern edit screen. Press and hold the accept reject button to change the frame size to fine tune the pattern. Once I'm happy with my constructed pattern, I press menu and scroll down to exit. Pressing the menu button again, I'm prompted to save my pattern. I select yes and press the menu button to save my pattern. I would then normally repeat this procedure to build pattern two, ending up with two custom patterns within my new mode, which I can toggle between via the detect button while metal detecting. Now I'm going to modify the tones I get from my CTX3030. Select tone ID profile and press the menu button to enter the tone edit window. This is currently set at 50 conductive tones but I'm going to change this to combine tones. Press menu and select profile type. Press the menu button and then scroll down and select combine tones from the bottom of the list. Press the menu button twice to return to the tone ID profile window. Choose resize from the list and press menu. Select a panel and press menu. Use the left right buttons to resize it. Then press menu and select the next area to be adjusted. Press menu. Choose resize from the list and press menu. Resize this time using the up down buttons. Press the menu button twice to return to the tone ID profile window. Scroll down to change pitch and press the menu button. Here we can change the tone pitches for each area. This is done using the left and right buttons to select areas within the numeric tone and the up down buttons to change their values. The higher the eventual number, the higher the tone. We then repeat this for each area. Now I'm happy with the tones of each area, I press the menu button and scroll down to exit. Press menu and then select yes to save the new tone ID profile. Press menu to return to the mode window. Now I just need to change a few more settings. Using the left right buttons I change response to normal. Select recovery fast and press the menu to tick the box. Recovery deep I'm leaving off. Sea water, also off. Use the left and right buttons to scroll through the different target separations. I'm going to choose ground coin. And finally, I'm changing the pinpoint to sizing. So I press the detect button that lifts me out of the menu system and saves those last few settings to my custom mode. Now, I don't recommend any of my settings that I've just showed you or even the patterns that I built. This was purely for demonstration purposes, but it gives you the, an idea of how easy it is to build your own custom mode, one more suited for your style of detecting.